A few weeks ago, I released a video which was the ultimate guide to X lookup. In there, we cover techniques such as spilling with scalar values and spilling using multiple values in the return array. The thing is that if we bring these two techniques together, Excel doesn't behave as we expect. Instead, we get the array of arrays issue. So in this video, we're looking at what that issue is and also how we can resolve it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here on the left, we have the data. We want to look up the value Charlie from the item column and return the values from the Q1 to Q4 columns. In cell I6, I'll enter equals X lookup, opening bracket. The lookup value is H6. Then the lookup array is the item column and the return array is the columns Q1 to Q4. Then when we close and calculate, the formula returns all four columns. So from that one formula, it spills the results into those four cells. Now, another option for spilling is if we provide multiple lookup values. In cell I6, I will enter equals X lookup. The lookup value will be the range H6 to H8. The lookup array will be the item column and the return array will be the Q1 column. When we close that and calculate, it performs the X lookup for each row and returns all those rows as an array. Now, what happens if we try to combine those techniques? So rather than just returning Q1, we want to return Q1 to Q4. Suddenly it doesn't work. It only returns the first column. So what's the issue? Why doesn't this work? Well, it's because of the array of arrays problem. X lookup is calculating for each row in that lookup value. It starts by looking up Charlie and returns the values from Q1 to Q4 as an array. Then it looks up Echo and returns another array. Then it looks up Alpha and returns another array. Having calculated all of these, it combines these arrays together into another array and then tries to return the result. Which means that rather than a single array, which spills vertically and horizontally, instead we get an array of arrays. Now you might be thinking, well, how can we resolve this issue? Well, let's go and look at two options. The first method that we're looking at uses a lambda and reduce combination. In cell I6, I'll type equals reduce, opening bracket. Reduce forces us to start with an initial value. For this, I'm just going to enter an empty text string. Then the second argument is the array. These are the items that we want to loop over. We want to loop over the range H6 to H8. So it will perform a calculation for each of those values. Then we come to the function argument. And for this, we're going to use a lambda function. Now reduce passes across two values. It has the state after each calculation, and it also has the current value in the loop. We're going to call these two values state and current. Now, as each loop calculates, we want to stack the results together. Therefore, we're going to use the vStack function. And we want to vStack the state with the result of each X lookup, which means the lookup value for our X lookup will be whatever our current value is. So whatever value is passed across from our reduce function. Then for the lookup array, that will be the same as before. It will be the item column. And for the return array, we want to return the columns from Q1 to Q4. We can close all those brackets and calculate, and we now get all of those results spilling. However, reduce made us start with an initial value. And that's what we have in that first row. We don't want that first value. So we're going to use the drop function at the start. And then at the end, we want to drop that one row. And when we close that and calculate, it now gives us the results that we expect. Now, unfortunately, this reduce lambda and vstat combination is exceptionally slow to calculate over a large range. So let's go and take a look at a different method, which is faster, and it doesn't even use an X lookup at all. In this solution, we're going to simulate the results of X lookup by using a choose rows and X match function combination. In I6, I'll start with equals X match opening bracket. The lookup value will be the values from H6 to H8. And then we have the lookup array and we want to look up from the item column. When we calculate that, it gives us an array of the row numbers where we can find those results. 
and we can use this array inside the choose rows function. So at the start, I'll enter choose rows, opening bracket. For the array argument, we're going to select columns Q1 to Q4. Then the row num1 argument for choose rows, we're going to use the previously calculated X match. We can then close the choose rows and calculate, and that's it. We get the results that we want, but without using XLOOKUP at all. And there you go, that's two ways that we can avoid the array of arrays issue that's caused by XLOOKUP trying to spill in two directions. If you learned something from this video, why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. But also it tells YouTube that we're a helpful channel and that means that they're more likely to show our videos to others. So it helps you, but it also helps others as well. Then once you've done that, click there. That is another awesome Excel formula video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.